Hey guys, this here is my fishing kayak. Originally it was just a kayak. A friend of mine got me into kayaking just to go out and look at nature and get on the rivers here in Florida and I absolutely loved it. And then I met another friend who told me, you have a kayak? You need to go out there and do some fishing. Well, of course, the next thing you know, I start fishing off my kayak. And that's where the trouble began, because I started adding things to this simple kayak that I had. Well, I've learned quite a lot on YouTube by people who were uh, kind enough to share their information and their knowledge by posting videos. So this is me giving back a little bit by showing what I've done with, with my kayak here. So I guess I should start with uh, some of the things that are already attached to the kayak right now. This is one of them. This is just a simple rope uh, attached at the back and it runs the length of the boat and attaches again to another eyelet up here in, this, in the bow. That's just a little ring with a section of rope to keep it from... If I just put the, rope, the ring here on this, it'd be too tight and it would get tangled. So I put a short length of rope from here to here. And then another rope that loops from one end to the other. In the middle, there's a ring that I can put my anchor line through. And by giving it a little pull, I can send this ring to the front of the boat, or to the back, and that will determine where the anchor is holding the boat. Having an anchor trolley seems like a trivial thing perhaps, but you want to face the fishing, and if you're tied off at the front or the side all the time, you're not going to be facing the action sometimes like you want to be. And this here is my anchor. It's just a 10 pound plate. It used to be a 5 pounder, um, but sometimes in a strong current, it, uh, you, you, you'll still just pull the anchor along. Again, I had these laying around the house. I didn't have to buy anything. Nice and cheap. The rope tied off. I have some, I sprayed it red in spots so I knew that as I'm pulling it up over the side, I knew it was coming. Uh, before I actually saw it. And on the other end, I did the same thing. I've got this side painted too, and when I want to deploy it, I'll put it through the loop, throw this side over the edge, and when it gets nice and tight, I'll tie it off to this cleat that I put onto the boat here. That's the anchor. While I'm here, I'm just going to put everything onto the boat as if I were heading out and show you them as we go along. Um, 
any kayak, if you're going to be out there all day, needs a seat cushion. And they sell some really nice seat cushions uh, that are kind of expensive. And what I did is I just took a piece of styrofoam and I molded it to the shape of a seat and stuck it inside one of these, which I got for free with something from my computer. I forget what it was, but it's, it's just a laptop case. It's kind of neoprene, somewhat waterproof. And when I embed that styrofoam in there, it turns into an actually pretty comfortable seat cushion. And it keeps the water from coming up through the scupper holes and uh, getting my backside wet. So there's a seat cushion, cost to me practically zero dollars. Right on top of the seat, I put my personal flotation device. And this one actually was kind of expensive. They have real cheap ones, uh, but they're bulky and dorky looking and stuff. And if you're not going to wear something, uh, for whatever reason, if it doesn't look good or um, if, it do if it's not comfortable, there's a very good reason not to wear it. And personally, I think a flotation device is a real good thing. I've gone over before, and the second you bob up to the top of the water, you're happy you've got this on. So I went out and I did spend a couple dollars on a good uh, flotation device. And I would uh, advise anybody else to do the same. Here in the back of the boat, it originally had the zigzag bungees, but I knew I was going to be strapping a lot of stuff to this boat, so the space was going to be at a premium, and that zigzag bungee was not going to work. I went online and I found some of these iPads, I think they're called, uh, fairly cheap, and I've screwed them all over the boat. I put a little silicone underneath to keep water from getting out. I've never had any trouble. Anytime I try to drain it, there's no water in there, so I don't have any problems screwing stuff to the boat, obviously like this, which I'll get to later. Uh, but I've got a couple screwed down here to hold a pretty important piece of equipment. That piece of equipment, of course, being the cooler. You see I carved the name Contiki which is what I call this boat, into the side of the cooler because I got, I guess, too much time on my hands. Um, after I carved it with a little Dremel tool, I put uh, some paint to it just so it looks like it's part of the boat. Um, also, I've put a lot of bungees on it in the front and the back. That'll keep it real secure. Screwing the cooler down really tight, the way that I do, is important because I put the rod holders on the side of the cooler. When you have a lot of weight in here, it's going to uh, pull on the entire boat and the cooler. So I wanted to make sure that was pretty secure. Now in these scupper holes in the back, right in front of the cooler, that's where I store the dolly. This dolly, I got the idea from somebody on YouTube. I made it myself out of some PVC and some steel rod that I had laying around. These wheels from, were from an old uh, hand truck. They had to be pretty big so that they don't get stuck sand and stuff and they really work out very well. I'll show you some demonstrations of that right now.
In front of the dolly is where I put my tackle box. This is just a, a six pack cooler that I found at Walmart for about six dollars. Much better than and cheaper than the tackle boxes you could find online specific for fishing. And in here I've got all manner of little boxes and doodads that hold my hooks and, and whatnot and a light that I can strap to my head. Bug spray, very important. On top of there, there, I mean there are pouches all over this thing and it's become, it's really handy. Replaceable, it was red and black to match the cooler and everything about it was nice. There's a place up top for my soft lures and fluorocarbon which is hard to store because of its shape. Gloves, everything's readily available and it fits in there so nice in between the wheels and the seat and the cooler that it can't really come out. Uh, there is a possibility if I turned it over uh, that it would come out. So if I'm under heavy conditions or I have to go over open water or something, I do have a bungee back here. This bungee here, I can loop around the tackle box and it'll keep it in place. Very important to have everything secure on a kayak. That's my tackle box, my dolly, rod holders, cooler, and of course we have this little doohickey right here. I had noticed that while I was kayaking, um, the back of the boat wants to swing out. And what's happening there is called weather cocking. Uh, the front of the boat is pinned in place by the pressure of the water, pushing against it as you cut through the waves and the back of the boat, in the wake of the boat, has no lateral pressure on it. It's in like a low pressure zone. Um, if the wind is blowing or the current is, is pushing you in a certain direction. And what would happen is the second I would stop paddling to have a drink or for whatever reason, the boat would start to shift sideways. And it was very annoying. Sometimes, just to stay straight while I was paddling, I had to paddle vigorously on one side of the boat, just to go straight. And that's where this comes in handy. Uh, while I'm going along, I can reach back and grab this and set it down. And when this paddle digs into the water, it, it's like there's an invisible hand holding the boat in place. It works really, really well. I've seen these things on other kayaks where they're built in uh, on your really high dollar sea kayaks and stuff. And again, I, I found this kayak for $200 on Craigslist and it's just a simple eight foot kayak. Um, very maneuverable for rivers and stuff, but if you're going to go out on, onto the open waters to do some fishing, this really, really comes in handy. Now the way I could get this thing to pivot and still be sturdy is I used male fittings here and a female fitting there. Everything else is glued in place, but here, this slips in and out easily. And the same thing here on this side. I've got a female fitting here and a male fitting there. So one side's tightening, one side's loosening. And it enables me to just go in and out really easy. The handle here is made from an old scraper handle for scraping tiles and stuff. I slipped it off. It fit on the inch and a half PVC really well. The paddle I just made from a piece of plexiglass. It's fairly thick. I bought a sheet of it that was like two by four feet for about 16 bucks. Uh, I took a piece of PVC, cut a groove in it by using an angle grinder and a metal cutoff wheel. It cut through the PVC really well uh, and did that until I was able to fit the plexiglass right in between that, that slot that I cut in the PVC. And then I ran some screws, these are offset, on either side into the PVC. Of course I drilled a hole first and it's proven really sturdy. I've pulled the kayak out of the truck a couple of times and the entire weight of it and all my equipment was on this piece of plexiglass 
and it did not break. So that was encouraging. And of course, while I'm going through the water, if I do run aground, it automatically put, pushes it up out of the way. And it works phenomenally well, keeping me tracking forward. Also, instead of an elbow on this side, I put a T. In the top, there is a female fitting into which I can put accessories. One of the accessories I have is this piece of PVC here. You can see I've got a male end here that I'll slip into it. It comes to a T off this way and onto it I've put a lot of reflective tape so it can be seen at night really well. This is my camera mount. Onto this shaft right here is the, uh, where I bungee my tripod on top of which I'll put the camera and I can always swing it out way back here to give a good vantage point of myself and the kayak as I go along the river. Again I used a male and female fitting so I can swing this around to whatever position I happen to need the camera mount in. And on top of this mount there is another female fitting. Into that fitting goes another accessory. This time reflective tape on PVC on top of which there is a Coleman light pretty bright and that acts as my stern light when I'm out there at night. A really handy thing to have. This light was about 20 bucks at Walmart. I did buy two of them for this boat uh, but safety again like the life vest to me was pretty important. If I'm gonna be out there at night I want people to see me. The second light I have is attached to my fish cooler right here. This one, I painted half of it green, half of it red, so it's my little nav light and that goes on the bow of the, of the boat. But, but I think now I can give a little time to the, the fish cooler itself. All this thing is, is a toolbox that a buddy of mine was throwing away on a job set. So I got this for nothing. Uh, and I knew I was going to have a chore converting it into my fish box slash bait holder slash rod holder slash a whole bunch of stuff. So let me show you how it goes together. The first thing that I built was a little skeleton here out of PVC. It fits pretty nicely into the scupper holes. It rests on the front there. It doesn't restrict any of the water flow from going down underneath it. That might splash into the boat. Um, on top here, I've got a female fitting, and I sanded this out with a Dremel tool. This way, the fitting that I attach to the bottom of the toolbox will fit into it without getting stuck, and I'd be able to remove it also uh, quite easily. The front of the toolbox fits in between a little piece of plastic channel that I fit to the boat and that prevents any kind of lateral movement. On the, on the inside of the box I have a bungee that goes out the side and attaches to some hooks that I put in the bottom of the boat. Same thing with the front of the box. You can see the bungee runs through the box and then gets attached in the front like so. With those two bungees in place and the PVC into this fitting right here, it's pretty sturdy. And uh, my only complaint about it is it does, when it's filled with ice and fish, it's so high up on the boat, it makes it a little tipsy. 
uh, but nothing I can't control and it's never caused me to go overboard. Inside the toolbox I set a second toolbox that I had laying around that was old and broken and there was enough space in between the two that I was able to fill it with foam and then a little caulking and paint and that insulates this interior box. The insulation is further completed with a lid made out of some plastic from an old bed liner and a piece of styrofoam and that slips in there easy enough to take out while I'm fishing uh, just by reaching forward, lifting it up, throwing my fish in, closing that, and then this lid here. And then I don't have to worry about fish flopping out of the boat, or stabbing me, or putting them overboard on a stringer, and then pulling my kayak all over the river. So it's worked out really nice. Now onto the front of the box that faces the cockpit. I've got a multi-tool that fits in its little sheath right here. And this here is a bubbler. This tube goes down and in here goes my bait box. This box is what my bungees came in. It's a, uh, it was a plastic box, I cut it apart, I painted it red, and I painted a lot of shrimp on that side, and a little uh, signage over there. Into that I fit this container, which used to hold peanuts. I put a nail under a torch, got it really hot, and then sunk it into the container a whole bunch of different places. And this is in this is where I put my shrimp. Now next to the live bait box is where I put my dry box. This is another Walmart special for about six bucks. It keeps everything dry for me. Uh, I got tide tables in here and my fishing license. And it just attaches right here with a little carabiner. And that kind of completes my cockpit area. Up on top of the toolbox, a few other things. I have a rod holder that definitely comes in handy sometimes. Uh, a little knife that's got a place I can cut bait right here in front of me. This little tray is actually uh, very handy. Up here I glued a couple of magnets and on the bottom of this tackle box I screwed a piece of metal and that fits on there really nice and keeps my lures and hooks and stuff that I'm using most often within easy reach so I don't have to reach back into my tackle box every single time I need a hook or a split shot or something like that. I also keep a whistle with me that is part of this toolbox 
Coast Guard likes to see with one of those. And of course, the finishing touch is my navigational light. All cool things to have to be safe and whatnot. And another thing about playing by the rules, down here in Florida there are a lot of regulations on fish. So I've got a piece of cedar here I cut to size, it screws to the boat. The reason it's there is a starting point. It's, it's easy while I'm out on the water to take a fish, plop it here, put its head up against that block, and then read where the tail comes to, to which one of these marks. They're marked, there's the minimum for sheep's head, and trout, I believe, have to be 15, which is right here. Keep going down the line, and there's 18 inches. There are marks at various increments. 18 is the minimum for redfish. The maximum is way back here, 27. And this is my law stick, which never will get torn off because it's a little plastic sticker. I'll never forget to have it. It's a permanent addition of the boat. And anytime I'm unsure as to the size of a fish and whether or not I should release it, I just put it up against this block here and check its size. These are little marks that carve them into the boat with a razor knife, being careful not to penetrate all the way through, and then added a little bit of paint. And a few other items I might bring with me include these fish grabbers, uh, pretty handy, operational with one hand, and they'll hold on to your fish really well and give you some place to hold them so they don't get away into one of the slots in the back I'll put my net. One other addition that I made very recently is this piece of styrofoam and the reason for that, the reason I carry this with me is so that when I lift up the back side of the boat um, from that handle right there to put the wheels in underneath in the scupper holes the boat tends to rock back and forth when you're lifting it from the back and the front is on the ground because of the shape of the hull. So I just place that there first on the ground and it steadies the front of the boat while I'm putting the wheels in the back. That pretty much does it. That's where I'm at so far with my poor man's fishing kayak. Skeg and cooler and wheels and tackle box, fishing holders and lights, personal safety devices, anchor trolley, anchor dry box, bubbler, live bait well. I got pliers and a knife. Another little tackle box, a place to put my fish, a rod holder, nav lights, even a little carved tiki face in the front for good luck with the fishes. I hope this uh, helps you and inspires you to uh, add some stuff to your own kayak. Thanks for watching.